Nitty McPearly podcast. This is episode 53. Um, we're going to be talking about color theory today and going through all of our usual, usual stuff. This week has been a little crazy around here. Um, yeah, just a lot going on. And the good news is that when I know that I'm podcasting weekly, I'm kind of always keeping a, a notebook of what I want to talk about. But the, the bad thing about it is that it hasn't very, really been very long since we talked last. So I've got to like, okay, okay, what, what, what did we talk about last time? What are we going to talk about this time? So it was a busy week, but I finished the dog sweater. So this is the belly. It's a little bit shorter in the belly. Probably I should have, I didn't really measure. I just kind of knit it until I was done knitting it. And I, I did these little, these little front leg holes here per the pattern directions, mostly. I think I mostly followed the, the directions. I kind of get the gist of what I was supposed to do and then just kind of went with it. Um, the leash hole is in completely the wrong spot. This is just where I was when I remembered I wanted to put one in. It really needs to be like up here because I knit the middle size. I want to say this pattern came in um, extra small, small, and medium. And I just kind of guessed. So, you know, it's all fine. It's supposed to be rolled like this. And then this is where ideally a, um, thank you, Charlotte. Charlotte brought me a flower. Pretty. I didn't know our roses were doing that well. Um, ideally, this is be where the leash hole would go. But also, I feel like it's just for a smaller dog. Like, I think I just chose the wrong size. If I were gonna make this for him again, I'd probably make him, I think the largest size is medium. Um, and actually I went to the store today and I got him a little dog jacket and I bought him a small because he's a small dog. He's 15 pounds and uh, it was too small. So I'm gonna take it back and get him a medium. He's kind of long and skinny. He's tall, he's got long legs and he's just got a long, everything about him is long and thin. So, um, like I, I know other people whose dogs seem a lot smaller, who they weigh the same. It's just, he's just, he's just very long and thin. So anyway, I think it's fine. It really needs to be longer in the back. I'll show some, some pictures here of him wearing it. Uh, he does not love it, but what dog loves a sweater? Um, I think in the winter time, he's gonna be glad to have it. So this, this really came out really good. Now, like I said this last time too, on Etsy, the patterns don't really have names or at least some of them don't. If you put in cable dog sweater, Carol Rosa, um, she's the knitwear designer, then you can find this pattern. This only took me one skein of the Dubrovnik DK and I even had some left over. So I, re but then, you know, I, I could have made it bigger. I could have knit it more. Um, I've got a, the, this pat, this cable pattern is really cool. You can see the, the leash hole is right there. Again, would have been better to be right here, but whatever, it's a dog sweater. <laughs> It'll keep the dog warm and that's really all I care about. So, finished that, got a finished object. Um, the second thing that I've been working on that I have been keeping you up on is this very basic raglan and it just, it's so dull because it's just so beige and every day I get a little bit further, but this is a new design. It's a turtleneck. This is the top, it's a turtleneck and it's got raglan shaping and it goes by very slowly because I only knit it when my daughter is driving. Uh, and you know, sometimes I just don't get a lot of time to work on that, but I was really glad to finish one of those projects cause I was kind of burning out on them. I just, you know, I've got navy blue and beige and I just wanted something a little bit more interesting. I needed a cup of coffee this afternoon. Do you ever just need to kind of psych yourself up for the rest of the day? <laughs> I totally needed to do that today, so coffee. I, uh, I wanted to make a new design and I wanted to base it. Hey, Char, could you take that to the dining room, please? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, um, okay, but you have to be quiet. So this very pilly old thing is one of the very first things that I knit like 12 years ago. And gosh, it, it's probably, I can, I can see the mistakes in it a lot more clearly on the screen than I do in real life, but it's covered in pills. But honestly, I wear this thing 
all the time because it's so fluffy and warm and it's gray and it just looks good with everything. Um, so anyway, uh, I wear this all the time, but as you can see, first of all, it's kind of boring. Um, I can't even remember. I feel like this had like a slip stitch pattern. Uh, this was a Plymouth wool, Plymouth yarn pattern that I got at my local yarn store uh, forever and ever ago. And this yarn is really soft. It's an alpaca blend, um, but it's a little itchy. So I thought I wanna make something similar to this in that it's fat yarn and it's soft and it's a neutral color and will go with everything. Um, but maybe not gray. I have a lot of gray. I do a ton of gray. So I thought, what about like a really warm camel color? Hi, hi Rocky. <laughs> okay, run along. Goodbye. And so I dyed this color up. I just love how it came out. This is the Amsterdam Erin. And I also dyed up one skein on the Warsaw Worsted, and you can see that it took a little bit differently. So this is actually a mix of three different dyes to get this color, and I just love how it came out. Like I just thought, I think that if I mix these three, they will come out the way that I want, and they really, really did. So I'm gonna call this color Camel, and I'm working on a cowl, and you can see there's not a lot to it right now. But I'm working on a cowl with cables that's very, very simple to knit. These are some stitch markers uh, that I had in my shop back in the day. Um, I haven't even twisted the cable yet once, so I really just started this, I think, yesterday. Um, but I think that's something that I will wear a lot, and that's also going to be a new design, so keep an eye out for that. Um, my mystery knit along shawl for the advent calendars went to the tech editor this week and um, that's exciting. So I'm going to be breaking that up into a few clues, not 24 clues, probably four clues to work. Uh, if you want and you get your advent calendar, if you bought one uh, and you would like to work through the, um, hold, hold on. Okay, where was I? Um, so, I can't remember where I left off. I'll have to edit that out. But um, this is the camel color and I'm working on this uh, new cowl design. Oh, right, I was saying that my um, advent calendar shawl went to the tech editor this week, so that's exciting. I'm, I'm starting to close up that project and those are gonna be shipping out in um, a few weeks, soon, soon. So two, two weeks. So that is great. I'm really excited to put the cap on that and for you guys all to get the yarn that you've been waiting for and the, the mystery knit along that you've been waiting for. That's exciting. So um, yeah, I'm not sure, you know, these, you never know about projects like this. I probably will be seeking some test knitters for both the, uh, the turtleneck sweater and the cowl. Many of you have gone to my website and filled out the little, I wanna become a test knitter. And when you do that, I put your name into the group. And then when a new test knit comes out, I just say, who wants in on this one? And you can join in if you want to. So if, if you haven't already done that, but you would like to test knit, go to my website and down the little bar on the, on the left, there's a place where you can say, yes, I wanna become a test knitter. Um, a lot of times people give me their resume in there. Like, you know, I've test knit for so-and-so and, -so and I've, I've been knitting for so long. Um, it doesn't really matter. A newer knitter is always nice, someone who's less experienced because their brain doesn't fill in the stuff that a more experienced knitter's brain fills in. Like I, like with my dog sweater, you know, you kind of just go through and say, well, I kind of get the gist of what I'm doing here. I'll just do whatever I want. <laughs> but the thing about a new knitter is they really read the detailed directions and they, they look very closely. So, you know, you can be a new knitter and still, still test knit, that would be great. Um, Okay, so that's the progress so far. Um, in shop news, I do have a few more skeins of the Warsaw Worsted in the old base. I have this one in camel. Um, I have a couple in this bright turquoise called Andaman Sea. 
And I also have a few Everywhere hat kits in this new color called Spearmint. You can see it has some speckling in there, just some very light speckling. And you can find this color in the Everywhere hat kits. So those are available over on the website. Uh, I am wearing my Inverness sweater that I showed last week in a picture, and you can see it has the slimmer sleeves and the wide in the middle. And I'm wearing, I'm wearing shorts because I'm hot. <laughs> Not because it's hot, but because I'm hot. Like I'm always like 10 degrees warmer than everyone else these days. But this silhouette is my favorite thing right now. I like the slimmer sleeves and the wider body because that's just where I am right now. <laughs> uh, and I have on my um, magnifier necklace so that I can read my notes. Uh, oh, also over on the website, you can pick up a magnifier necklace. Um, okay, yeah, it's like I said, it's been a busy week and um, I'm excited. I'm excited about all this stuff. There's still things from the last shop update up on the website. Um, there's cranberry crisp sock sets, mermaid sock sets, things like that. I'm gonna be at that holiday market next year, so I've been trying to kind of you know, accumulate enough stock so that when I go, I have yarn to show. Um, I hope to have some printed patterns too. Um, yeah, anyway. Okay, so I was thinking it would be fun if we did some topics in knitting. And what I wanted to talk about first is color theory because I feel like this is some place where people get, a, they feel a little bit lost. And I went to a knitting retreat a few years ago and I signed up for a class on color. And when I was sitting there and I was talking to the other people, I realized a lot of people don't know what to do about color. They're not sure. I brought my plants in from the porch and they brought the flies in with them. <laughs> anyway, they don't know what to do with color. Like they know what they like and they know what they, want to make, but then when they go to the yarn store, they feel a little bit out at sea. Like, I like these colors, but do these go together? I don't know. Um, now there's a lot of very basic color theory information. Like for example, the color wheel. You know, colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel uh, look really good together. There's things like that. There's things like value and hue and how much saturation is in a color. Anyway, there's a lot of very basic color theory. However, it still requires you to know some rules and put them together. And there are rules like contrast looks good. And it does, but also low contrast looks good. So sometimes when there are rules that contradict one another, you're not sure which one to use or where to go with that. So what I always tell people is, if you find something you like, take a picture of it, take a screenshot of it, and then try and match that. Something that I really enjoy, and I got into this in around 2019, is using colors, to, using different colors together to make an overall neutral. And, um, you can look online. I especially like to look at home improvement magazines or um, paint colors. And you can see how these different colors can work together. And you can essentially have what is a rainbow of colors, but when you put it together, you get what looks like a neutral. For example, back in 2019, I lost my knitting mojo for a while and I, I decided I just, all my creativity flowed out of me and it was all gone. And so I downloaded Andrea Mowry's um, What the Fade Pattern. And I started working on that with some colors that, I'll, I'll put a picture up here so you can see. I couldn't find that shawl. I went to go look for it and I couldn't find it. Um, so I started off with her pattern and then as I went, I kind of, did whatever I wanted toward the end. So it's only a what the fade at the beginning and then after that I just kind of did whatever. But this is one of my favorite shawls. Um, the what the fade is really large and I didn't make mine as big as that. But it just has these colors that work really well together as a neutral. 
Um, I'm gonna put up a couple of color palettes that I found online to kind of illustrate what I mean. And these are paint palettes and you can see how these different colors, a rainbow of colors, all in kind of a muted tone, work together to give you an overall feeling of neutral. Um, this also happened last year. I did a mystery knit along with Clark and Elle. Uh, she dyed the yarn for the advent calendar. It was her advent calendar and I just contributed the mystery knit along. Uh, and that, let's see, where's the beginning? This way. So these were her colors. These, I think these were from the year before actually, but these really kind of illustrate that principle of different colors that overall work out to give you something that is more neutral. Um, and this is a really fun shawl. This is the Noah shawl, which you can you can get as just a regular pattern over on my website. And it has these cute tassels. It's actually very easy to put on. You take this kind of rectangular part and then you kind of go like this. And I will burst into flames at any moment. <laughs> um, but fat tassels with scraps, yes, all day long, love. But you can see how this, and I named it Noah because of the rainbow effect of it. Um, that it just uses all these different colors, but the overall effect is neutral. And I'll put up a couple pictures here too uh, of more of this shawl so that you can see um, this kind of idea. So two tips, if you want to make something and you don't know what color to use, first tip is, if you like the one the designer did, go buy that same yarn or buy a different yarn in the same color or a similar color. That's like easiest option of all. Um, if you want to do something different than that, then find a color palette online that you like or if you have a something in your closet, or if you see a bouquet of flowers that has the colors that you want, or a sunset or whatever, take a picture of that thing that has the colors you like and try to match it. Um, some dyers will do this for you. Uh, I have done this. I'll, I'll put up a picture uh, that one of my testers sent me that she asked for these colors and I dyed them for her and they look so great. Like I, I was so, so happy with how they came out. Um, but yeah, my favorite magazine to do this with is the HGTV magazine. I picked one up at the grocery store one time and it's crazy expensive to buy a magazine at the grocery store. So after that, I realized I really like this magazine. So I went ahead and subscribed to it, which is super cheap to subscribe to it and then have it delivered to you. Um, so that's a great magazine for color ideas. What I did was in my in my dyeing area is I took, I ripped out the pages of the, the color combinations that I liked and then I put them up on the wall. And then when I put the fan on, they all went and they went all over the place. So yeah, I <laughs> don't do that. But um, yeah, so that's a really great way to get color ideas. But if you find a color combination you like, go with that. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, by just going into a yarn store and saying, you know, you just see all these colors and all these choices and it's so hard to see what goes together. Let the designer put the colors together for you or, you know, a magazine, like I said, a magazine or a color palette or whatever. Find the colors that you like together and then go get yarn in that color. Does that help? I feel like I kind of talked around that a lot. But basically what I'm saying is don't feel like, oh, I'm bad at color. I don't know what to do. I remember there was one lady who I met in that, in that class and she had these three colors that in my humble opinion did not go at all. It was like a brown, a dark red, and like a periwinkle blue. And she wanted, she really wanted to put these together. Um, and I didn't know how to tell her, I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, maybe she did, you know, whatever, to each his own, but, um, they didn't go, it didn't look good. <laughs> um, yeah, so find something you like. It's okay to take that idea and use it in another context.
or in the same context if you're just using the designer's colors. Um, okay, yes, yeah, so anyway, I'm one of the, the dyers that will do that for you if you want. I'm sure there are others out there too, but where you can send them a palette and then they can dye that color, those colors up for you. But you should make what you really want. Another topic that is kind of tangential to this is I get a lot of emails that are like, you know, this designer has this new sweater coming out and we have the kits and this is what you're making next. And like they, they, they put it in your lap and you're like, well, what if I don't wanna make that? <laughs> or what if I don't wanna use that yarn? You know, if it's something that speaks to you, get it. If it's something that doesn't, then just let it go by. Um, there's a lot of big name designers who are, you know, they're kind of on that hamster wheel of new project, new project, new project, because they're, they have to pay the bills and you know, that's what they do and that's fine. But you don't have to jump on every bandwagon. I don't wanna be on that hamster wheel. Um, there was one sweater that came out and um, this is how I'm going to transition into my fantasies. Um, my first pick is the sweater. It is the Balshan sweater by Caitlin Hunter of Boylan Knitworks. And I saw this sweater the first time on the Magpie Fibers newsletter because she knitted in Magpie Fibers swanky sock and feather. I think feather is the mohair. And I'm not sure what combination this is. When I look at the sweater, I kind of feel like the main dark gray of the sweater is the swanky sock and that color work might just be in mohair, but I'm just guessing. I, I don't own the pattern, I don't know. Um, but when I first saw this sweater, I loved it. It's so different and I just thought it was so beautiful. Um, again, this is the Balshan sweater by Caitlin Hunter and it's gorgeous. So there's my fit, my pick number one. So when I went to Caitlin's Instagram to find pictures of this sweater, I did a little scrolling and I found another one of her sweaters that I absolutely love called the Jupiter Crop. And she designed this sweater and named it after her rooster named Jupiter. And you can to once you know that, you can totally see the rooster theme of the sweater and the colors and it's just so cute it's just i i just think it's beautiful i loved it when it first came out i would love to knit both of those sweaters by caitlin hunter um so then after that i thought okay well what am i going to pick next so i just kind of did some generic google searching because sometimes that leads me to places i've never been before and to designers that i've never seen before and I came across this pattern on Etsy called the Forest Berry Jacket by Fable Knitwear. And it was inspired by the 1930s and 40s. And I just thought it was so cute. It's kind of not where I am right now. Like I'm not in the fitted sweater part of my life at this moment. Um, but I just thought it was really pretty. I just thought it was great. And so then I was looking at her other designs and I found this other one called the Nutcracker Jumper, which I loved even more. Like this one, I could totally see myself making. I went through a real bobble phase in like 2020. Like I made a bunch of things with bobbles in them and this this one called the Nut, Nutcracker Jumper, which makes me think that this designer must be British, um, has bobbles and I just thought that it was so pretty. So, um, Let's see. Yeah, but those are my picks for knitting fantasies for this time. I don't have a, so here's what happened, but how about my fingernails? I lost all of my fingernails from chemo and I've been trying to find press on nails. So that's why I always have a different color. <laughs> um, but these ones are really shiny and I really like them. Um, they're growing back underneath, but it's not, it's not good. <laughs> So thank goodness for press on nails. These things are great. Um, I love the comments from last time. Uh, I need to go back and, and respond to them before I post this one up tomorrow. Um, it's been great seeing you guys every week and hearing from you every week. There's new things in my shop. There's old things in my shop. I just ordered a bunch of fabric to make some pearly pouches. I'll put a picture up here if you don't remember what that is. It's a little 
like pyramid shaped pouch that you can just chuck into your purse and you can put tons of stuff in there. Chapstick and cable needles and darning needles, tapestry needles, um, travel deodorant. I put all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, knit, knit, knitting counter, click, click, knitting counters, things like that. Stitch markers, little tins of stitch markers. Those are great to have. So I'm gonna have those in my shop. The problem is that I put stuff in my shop and then it, and I'm thinking to myself, like for the holiday market and next year the farmer's market, I'm thinking like I need to have stock. I need to have this stuff. But it sells out so quickly online, which I love. It's great. I'm, it makes me so happy that you guys like it too. Um, I just need to make more so that I can sell it at the holiday market. So uh, again, December 11th, I mentioned it last time. I don't think I mentioned the date. If you are in the vicinity of Manassas, Virginia, and you want to go to the holiday market on December 11th, it's from like 10.30 to 2.30. It's not all day, but um, that should be fun. So that's in just a little over a month. I don't have everything I need for that yet. Like I need like a point of sale swiper thing. And yeah, it's it's a whole new thing. This is my very first time doing something like this. So I'm, I'm pumped about it. It's gonna be really fun. Um, so yeah, come and join me there. I will be here again next week. This is our place. I'll see you uh, Friday of next week. All right, bye knitters. Stay, stay for some bloopers. <laughs> bye. Isn't this mug cute? It's totally like 70s, isn't it? I thrifted this a couple years ago. I just love this mug. It's perfect for a small afternoon cup of coffee. Hi knitters, welcome to the Knitting Made Pearly podcast, episode 53 on color theory. What's up, boo-boo? Can I show my bucket? Sure, come come show him. Not knitted, but still cute. Okay. What are you doing? <laughs> what were those Mento fun things? They were like Mento fun things. Um, Did they record inside? The small tiny boxes. I don't know. Like uh, Pez. Oh, those are for another day. When? So I'm actually actively recording right now. Maybe we'll put this in the bloopers. Oh. But what are you doing, bro? What's Rocky doing? He's in the back room. Okay, why don't you guys all go back there? Wait, I heard you're gonna be bloopers. Can I do this one? Yeah, come and bloop. <laughs> Wait, these are the bloopers. <laughs> what? <laughs> I want to see. See, the bloopers are fun. <laughs> they are fun. All right. What are bloopers? Now we can't have <laughs> half an hour of bloopers. <laughs> You know, I guess I was hot. Can't see the bottom half. Can't see the bottom half. Is this, is this gonna go on like your website? Mm -hmm. Wait. What? Oh, sure. I think you got Kiss a little me. bit of lipstick on your cheek. Oh, you did. All right. Run along, folks. Yep. Sorry for your, uh, sorry. I didn't know you were recording. Okay, I'm gonna pause it now. Sorry, Rocky. Sorry, buddy. Can you get it in the video? Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. All right. Come here, Rocky. Say hi. Hi. Hey, I'm hi, fans. You're such a good boy. <laughs> hi, fans. There you go. You got it? Okay. Good boy, Rocky. Let's go outside. What are you doing? I'm taking my glasses. I lost them. I'm there. In your room? Charlotte's taking them out. Okay. Are we ready? Bye. Bye. Come on, Rocky, you 